Yeah. Yeah. So um, factoring it isn't quite going to get us what we want. Because remember, so I mean, I think it does factor, right? What is it? Does it, does it factor? Actually, yeah, it does. Like plus three and minus one, right? Negative x plus three negative parenthesis x plus three times x minus one. Um, it does factor, but factoring is not quite going to get us what we want. Because if you think back to what we were doing the other day, we, we kept having these like a squared minus x squareds or x squared minus a squareds or a squareds plus x squareds. And yeah, so I got it. we got it there in the chat there. We want to try and complete the square with this. So in order to complete the square with it, the first thing we're going to do, and, and anytime you see a quadratic in there inside the square, you're probably going to probably going to want to complete the square to turn it into something that you can um, do one of those trig substitutions with. So first thing we'll do is we'll take a negative out of it just to make life a little bit easier. Negative and then x squared plus 2x minus 3. And as we go in and try to complete the square on this, what is that going to give us? It's going to give us negative and we'll have to do x squared plus 2x and we want it to be a plus 1, right? because that's how we would complete the square. So what has to be left inside of there if we have a plus one inside there now? Minus four. Minus four, yeah. And so that helps us, I think, to, uh, to complete the square with that, which is going to give us negative parenthesis x plus one squared minus four. Yeah. And if we were to redistribute that negative back through, what do we have here? We have four minus x plus one squared. And now that looks like a squared minus u squared, doesn't it? With u equal to x plus one. I could just write a squared minus x squared or x plus one squared. And so what do we want to do? What substitution do we think would be the right thing to do here? A sine theta. Yeah, so this is a sine theta one. So I don't know why I wrote an A. I guess I could just write two, right? So this is something should be two sine theta. Well, what should be two sine theta? Is it x should be two sine theta? X plus one should be x plus one should be two sine theta. So everybody see what we did there? We got it down into a form of a squared minus u squared and we left the u x plus one equal our a sine theta. Everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. All right, and what is dx gonna be? Cause we're gonna need that also. dx should be two cosine theta d theta. Everybody agree there with that? which ought to give us an integral of x. Well, what's x? Two sine theta minus one. Two sine theta minus one, right? Just from taking our x plus one equals two sine theta and subtracting the one. And then we got our dx, which is our two cosine theta, d theta. And then that's all gonna be over our square root of what? three minus two X minus X squared was the same as four minus X plus one squared. So that's four minus <laughs> X plus one is two sine theta. So four minus four sine squared theta. And right, everybody good with that? We turned this into this and then made the substitution. Good or no? Very cool. Yeah, very cool. Agreed. All right. So now we're going to integrate. Let's see here. Um, if I take the four out of here, it becomes a two, right? And that two ought to cancel with this two. And if I have a one minus sine squared, that ought to become cosine squared. And if I square root, that ought to become cosine. So the two, this is effectively just two cosine theta down here, which will cancel with that two cosine theta. So now we've just got the integral of two sine theta minus one d theta. And what should that give us? Should be negative 2 cosine theta. 
<laughs> minus theta plus constant. And on our right triangle here, we knew that sine theta, that's theta, was x plus one over two. And what does that get us for this one right here? It gets us four minus x plus one squared, or it gets us this thing that we started with. And then that third side of your right triangle will always come out to be whatever you started with inside that square root. So negative two cosine theta ought to be what? Negative two times d cosine, which is this over the two. And so the two is out of cancel. And we got to get negative root three minus two x minus x squared minus theta. And theta is just the inverse sine of x plus one over two plus our constant. Any questions on that or everybody good with that? I have to give the two. That's pretty cool. Um, the two, so remember, this is cosine theta. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's root three minus two x minus x squared over two. So it just cancels with that too. Gotcha, thank you. No problem. You guys think you could do one like that on your own? Yeah, so um, the question about the um, question about the triangle real quick. So the triangle, um, we started with this, x plus one equals two sine theta was our substitution, which means that any you know, anytime I have something with a sine of theta, I can always put that on a right triangle. So there's theta and the sine of theta would be x plus one over two. So opposite over hypotenuse, x plus one over two. And then just using Pythagorean theorem, you end up getting this same three minus two x minus x squared inside a square root for the third side. And so we use that triangle to tell us what cosine of theta is, because we need we need that for our final answer. So adjacent over it. Okay. Everybody good with all of that? Totally. Totally. Great. So what do you guys think? You think you could do one of these on your own or no? Let's see. I think we should try. I think you should try also. That's a good idea. All right. So let's see if you can do this one. One over the square root of x squared plus 8x plus 25 dx. So very, very similar to the last one. I'll give you guys, I don't know. It, it, in fact, it's probably a little easier than the last one once you get it, once you get it going. Maybe not. I'll give you three or four minutes and then I'll check in with you and see how you're doing. Sound good? Great, no response. Ready, go. All right, so what do we do to start with here? We should have completed the square. So this should become x plus four squared, and the square root of x plus four squared plus, so completing the square means we need a 16 there. So what do we have left over? We have a nine left over, right? x plus four squared plus nine. Everybody agree with that? Agreed. Okay. And so then we're going to do the substitution where x plus 4 is equal to 3 tangent theta. And dx, because we will need that, will be 3 secant squared theta, d theta. And then we can go in and rewrite our integral. So this integral should become an integral of our dx, which is 3 secant squared theta d theta. <laughs> over, and then this one becomes the square root of, this is 9 tangent squared theta plus 9. And if we simplify this all out, what do we end up with? Just secant theta. Yeah, just secant theta. We take the nine out, threes cancel. Tangent squared theta plus one is secant squared theta and you square root it to get secant. So secant squared over secant is just secant. So we just have the integral of secant theta d theta. And we learned that one the other day, right? That's the 
natural log of the absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta plus our constant. And if we do our right triangle trig stuff over here, we know that uh, we started with tangent, so x plus four opposite over adjacent three. And like I said before, this will always come out to be the same, but if you wanna do the work to show that that is x to the second plus eight x plus 25, you can, but it's always gonna come out to be that whatever the third side is, is what you started with. And now we'll just plug it all in. So we got natural log absolute value secant theta. So secant should be our hypotenuse over our adjacent. So root x squared plus eight x plus 25 over three plus our tangent theta, which we already had, that's x plus four over three plus our constant. And if we wanted to, we could get rid of these over threes by making this natural log absolute value of just this. Minus the natural log of three plus our constant. And since we have a natural log of three plus a constant, we could rewrite this as natural log absolute value of everything else plus some other constant where C is equal to our first constant minus L and three. You good or no? That is what I got. Anybody have any issues with that? Did you guys all take this last step to get rid of the over threes to simplify it a little more? If not, that's fine. Any of these three answers along the way here, any of these would be good. This one is probably best and nicest to look at, um, but you could expect to see any of those three answers on a multiple choice question. So, everyone okay with that? Yeah, good. Wonderful. All right. Let's take a look here at this one. Any thoughts on this one? All right, so I got the uh, U sub here, right? A U sub. So if we think about trying to do, I'm going to have to take it just a second here. If we think about trying to do x equals 2 tangent theta, what are, what's going to happen? If x is 2 tangent theta, which I know, Ryan, that's not what you were saying to do, but I just want to talk about why we can't do that. If x is 2 tangent theta, this ends up becoming, you know, 4 tangent squared theta plus 4. Pull the 4 out as a cube root of 4. That's fine. Um, and you have tangent squared theta plus one, but we have to cube root that. So we end up with like a secant to the two thirds power, which is some garbage that we really don't want to have to deal with. So it's going to be a lot better if we just u sub out the denominator there, u equals x squared plus four. Okay. And if we do that, then what's du going to be? It should be two x dx. And so we can rewrite this as two x times x squared over u to the one third, still a dx right now because I haven't substituted all that out yet. Good or no? Oh, I can put one half outside because I put the two x up there. Sorry. Everybody good with that? Should be the same thing, right? We still have an x cubed and this is just u to the one third. And then that will become one half of the integral of uh, 2x dx is our du, x squared itself is u minus 4 over u to the one third, 
now it's du. Okay. So my whole point here is just make sure that just because you see that term doesn't necessarily mean that you need to do one of these trig substitutions. Sometimes a regular u substitution is um, just as good. And how do we deal with this? With delta. Yeah, divide out the what it would do. What did you say? You said divide out the u to the one third, right? That is what I said. Yeah. Yeah. So u over u to the one third ought to be u to the two thirds, and negative four divided by u to the one third ought to be negative four u to the negative one third du. And now we should be able to integrate that really easily. And I'm going to distribute the one half through as I do this. So um, that'll go up to five thirds. So we'll multiply by three fifths, which will make it three tenths. So we got three tenths u to the five thirds. And then this, that's a minus two. And that'll go up to two thirds, which ought to give us, what is that? Uh, two, two, three, three. Uh, what does that come out to be? It comes out to be minus. Uh, Three, right? Yeah, minus three. I can do arithmetic. Minus three u to the two thirds plus our constant. Everybody agree there? And just resubstitute out there. Good or no? Good. Great. Is it safe to say that anytime you can identify a U substitution, like just one U substitution, that that would be better than an inverse trig substitution? I would say that 99% of the time that would be true. If you see a U sub that you think will work, it'll probably work more easily than a trig sub. So try it first. And if it just comes out to be something horribly awful, something completely heinous, just, you know, switch over and try the other way. But Generally, yes, the use sub will be much easier. Everybody good? Everybody following along? Everyone's all right? No issues? All right, what about something like this? One over square root x plus cube root x. Any thoughts on what to do with that? <clears throat> uh, this may be wrong, but that's just x to the negative one half plus. No, that's... X to... no, no, is it not? Oh, wait, no, no I'm dumb. Yeah. That's that's dumb. Sorry. I mean, I wasn't going to say that because I'm recording this lecture, but no, we can't do that um, because of the plus sign. Yeah. All right. So this is one you've probably not seen before. The right thing to do anytime you see, um, and, and these pop up every once in a while, and chances of you seeing one of these on the AP test is slim. But chances of you seeing it in a future math class somewhere along the road where you need to do this if you're planning on going forward in math or science is, is relatively likely. Um, anytime you need to integrate something like this, um, think about the powers here. This is x to the one half and this is x to the one third. And just get a common denominator for one half and one third. And what would the fraction be then? Or what would the denominator be? It would be a one. Okay. Six. So we're just going to let u equal x to the 1 6. So whatever that common denominator is, use that as your power for x and let u equal that, which tells us then that a um, couple different things we'll need to do here because we need to find dx. It's probably easiest to find dx if I say, well, u to the 6 is equal to x. So dx will be 6u to the 5th du. Everybody good with that? 
are now. Yes, no, maybe. So much easier when you guys respond, and I know if you're like, okay, whatever. It does make sense, yes. Oh, great, all right. Okay, so um, our dx in the numerator is just six u to the fifth du, and our denominator, well, x to the one half. How do I go from x to the one sixth to x to the one half? I have to cube x to the one sixth, right? So that means I have to cube the u. So that ought to be u cubed. And what about the x to the one third? It should become u to the second, right? u squared. And first off, this will simplify a little bit, right? So let's make this a little simpler to begin with. Um, take the six out, if we wish. And then u to the fifth over u cubed plus u squared, I could just divide out a u squared from all of that. So u cubed over u plus one du. Everybody follow along to that point because that's very important that you get to there okay. Just in case you ever see one of those later. Everyone's good with that? Yeah, that all okay. makes sense. It all makes sense. Good. All right. Now, the even more important part about this problem is um, where do we go from here? Because this is a little different than some of the integrals we've been dealing with. Anybody have an idea of what to do here? Divide the polynomials? Yes. So um, what we've got here now is a rational function. Everybody would agree with that? We have a rational function inside of our integrand, or our integrand is a rational function? Agreed. Okay. So anytime you have a rational function as your integrand, and the denominator is not just a single term, like, like here, we just had a single term down here. Not that this was a rational function, but we just had a single term down there, and we could just divide nicely. Anytime you have this, where the degree of the numerator is greater than or equal to the degree of the nom denominator, always divide before you try to do anything else. Unless there's like a really easy u substitution that you see, always divide it out. So we're going to divide u cubed by u plus one. And so we'll do that off to the side over here. Um, I'll just do it using synthetic division because that's easier, right? Negative one is what goes up here since we're dividing by u plus one and it's u cubed plus zero u squared plus zero u plus zero. Bring down the one, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. Everybody good with the synthetic division there? Yes. All right, so that gives us, this drops down from a cubed, which is what we started to a squared. So u squared minus u plus one, minus one over our original divisor there, u plus one d. Everybody good there? Yeah. All right, now the division, I mean the integration, I don't know why I said division, the integration should be really easy. All four of those terms should be easy to integrate. Uh, I'm just gonna throw the six in with each of them as I go. So this becomes u cubed over three times six, which will just be, what, six u cubed? And why did I say six two u cubed? This will become minus u squared over two times the six will become minus three u squared. And then we've got plus one, so that becomes plus u, so plus six u. And then what about the minus one over u plus one? That's actually a u sub integral, right? But the u plus one there in the denominator, just like a u, oh well, that looks less like a u, um, just gets subbed out. If I let v equal u plus one, du is still dv, so that just becomes minus six, what? Natural log absolute value u plus one, plus our constant. Everybody good with that? Right. If this was a 2u plus 1, what would we have to do? We'd actually have to do the substitution, right? And again, we'd have an extra half attached to it if we had a 2u down there. Everybody understanding what I'm saying or no? Yeah. Okay. 
All right, then all we gotta do is resubstitute back in in terms of x, so two u cubed, well, if I cube x to the one sixth, that's x to the one half, or root x, and u squared, that'll be to the one third, so minus three cube roots of x, and then plus six u, that's plus six to the, or six x to the one sixth, or six sixth roots of x, and then minus six natural log absolute value of the sixth root of x plus one, which we know the sixth root of x is always going to be a positive number. So the absolute value becomes insignificant since we're taking a positive and adding one to it. If you leave the absolute value on, that's fine, but I'm gonna to choose to take it off because we don't need it anymore. And we get plus C. Good or no? So two important things to this. One is if you ever see an integral like this, that's how you get your correct substitution. Two, anytime you have a rational function where the denominator is not just a single term and the degree of the numerator is greater than or equal to the degree of the denominator, divide it out first. And we're gonna start dealing with that concept of this needing to do this division a lot. Um, we're going to get into it just a little bit today, and then when we come back from vacation, we're going to do a lot more work with it. So, um, good or no? Good. Great. All right, so let's take a look at x cubed plus x over x minus 1. So well, I have a question first, on, the, oh, on the previous question really quick. Yeah. Um, for like the... When you solved x equals u to the sixth and you found dx equals six u to the fifth, mm -hmm. like how come that method of substituting dx is different? Because usually what we do in the other problem is find the derivative of u. And yeah, then... we still did. We still found the derivative, just of u to the sixth. I mean, if you wanted to do it up here, that's fine. du is one sixth of x to the negative five sixths. Um, so, I mean, then you have to get a one sixth x to the negative five sixths up in there somewhere to replace with a du. So you're going to have to multiply by the sixth, and then you're going to have to put in this x to the negative five sixths, and then also put in, you know, an x to the five sixths to cancel that out. And it's just going to be kind of a whole mess of things to deal with. It'll still work out eventually, but it's much easier to just convert it this way and say, well, I can figure out exactly what dx is, I can just replace it with what du is. Okay, I see. So it's just whatever is easier? Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay. And you can always, I mean, you can always do it this way. You can always, if you do a substitution for u, u equals, you know, 7x plus 5 or whatever you want, you know, you can always solve that for x and then take your derivative to figure out exactly what dx is and then just replace it in there. That's totally fine. Okay. Yeah, that'll, that'll always work too. It's just that's usually messier than, in my opinion, usually messier than just adding in a little term to change it. Around. Got it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's take a look at this one. This is a rational function. The first thing we should look at for any rational function first is, is there a very simple u substitution? So anybody see a really simple u substitution that will work for this? X minus one. All right, we could try using X minus one. So. Let's think about this, and, and we could do it this way. If u equals x minus 1, then x equals u plus 1, and your dx is just going to be your du, which is great. But then all of these x's have to be u plus 1s, which is going to be u plus 1 cubed plus another u plus 1 over u. And we're going to have to do a lot of distributing and then divide it all by u. And it'll work, um, but it's going to be a pain. Um, that doesn't seem like that much of a pain. I mean, it's not that bad, but the way we're going to do it is a lot easier. Um, <clears throat> all right, that's fine. Let's do it this way. And then we're going to do it the other way also. So um, we could make this into an integral. And let me write this. du must be equal to dx. So we can do this. u plus 1 cubed plus 
u plus one du over u, and then u plus one cubed is u cubed plus three u squared plus three u plus the u is going to be plus four u plus one plus the other one is going to be plus two all over u du. So that's not too bad. I, I mean, I agree. This isn't that bad, but it could be easier the other way and give us a nicer looking answer. So this is going to be now u squared plus 3u plus 4 plus 2 over u du, which will then give us what, u cubed over 3 plus 3u squared over 2 plus 4u plus 2 natural log absolute value u plus your constant which then when I resubstitute in is going to give me x minus 1 cubed over 3 plus 3 times x minus 1 squared over 2 plus 4 times x minus 1 plus 2 natural log absolute value x minus 1 plus our constant, which I agree. I mean, that wasn't that difficult. True? Not that bad. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, not that bad. So um, let's see how much nicer our answer looks, how much simpler our answer is, and how much really, I mean, not that that work was difficult, but we're going to have less work doing it this other way. We won't have to do any sort of use substitution. So um, we started with what? X cubed plus X over, what was it, X minus one? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's do the division. 1x cubed, 0x squared, 1x, and 0, which gives us 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, and 2 using your synthetic division. So this integral then just becomes an integral of x squared plus x plus 2 plus 2 over x minus 1 dx. And now we're done x cubed over 3 plus x squared over 2 plus 2x two plus 2 natural log absolute value x minus 1 plus your plus. So I would, I would argue that that is much quicker. Not that the other way wasn't pretty easy also, but I would argue that's much quicker. Plus, this answer is a lot more simplified, cleaner looking than this is. If I were to distribute all of this garbage out in here with the x cubes and the x, all this stuff, we would find that it is, you know, exactly equivalent to what we just got this way. But this looks a lot nicer to begin with than this does. Okay. True or no? True. Yeah, if you like doing it this way better, I mean, by all means, spend the extra time to do it that way, I guess. But I like simplified answers that take less time to get than unsimplified answers that take longer to get. Personally, that's just me, though. So my recommendation is do it the way we did it second. Any questions on how we did that? Good question. Mm -hmm. um, I, this might sound really dumb, but can you go over synthetic division again? Yeah, sure. So synthetic division, um, it's just, a, I mean, it's just shorthand for dividing the uh, polynomials. So if you're dividing by x minus a or x plus a, you can always just do synthetic division, which means take whatever makes this thing equal to zero, which would be a one, put it up here in the box, and then go across writing the coefficients of the thing you're dividing. So I'm dividing x cubed plus x, so that's one x cubed, zero x squareds, one x, and then a constant of zero. And then First thing you do is you draw your line and drop the first number below the line to be a one. Anytime you have a number below the, the line, multiply it by what's up here in the box. So one times one is one. It goes in the next column underneath the next number. Anytime you have two numbers above the line, add them together and put it below the line. So zero and one is one. Multiply the one and the one to get one. It goes in the next column. Add the one and the one to get two. It goes below. Multiply the two and the one to get two. It goes above the line and then add them to get the two. And then it just drops down by a term. So we started with x cubed, so this is x squared. 
this is just x, this is the constant, and it's this divided by your original divisor there. Thank you. No problem. Everybody good with synthetic division and all of it? All right. Let's do at least one more problem. And this will hopefully give us a little bit of a taste of what we're going to do when we come back next year after vacation. So we've got x squared plus 2x minus 1 over 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x. It's a rational function. Everybody would agree with that? I hope. Would you agree that's a rational function? Sure. Yes. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, it's a rational function. It's polynomial over polynomial. First off, do you see a nice, simple u substitution that you could use for this? I mean, you could set out the 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x, maybe. But that's going to end up giving you 6x squared plus 6x minus 2 which is going to be a, a pain to get in there. And then you're going to have a bunch of extra stuff added and subtracted together, which is going to be a, a nightmare. Um, I, think, I think it's going to be a nightmare. So then we look, since it's a rational function, is the degree of the numerator greater than or equal to the degree of the denominator? No, but could we factor out an x from the bottom? Uh, yeah, we could, but it doesn't change the degree of the numerator, right? It's still the uh, the degree of the denominator. I mean, it's still a still a cubed is the degree of it, and we will factor out an x from it in just a second. Um, but um, important point though is that because the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator for this rational function, we have to use a new method for integrating this, and that new method is called partial fraction decomposition. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to do exactly what I think it was Derek, or that was you was asking us to factor out that x. No. Yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to factor out that x. And in fact, we're going to factor out the denominator completely. So if I take out the x, I'm left with 2x squared plus 3x minus 2, which should factor to what? Two x minus one and x plus two. Two x minus one and x plus two. All right, so we've fully factored our denominator. And we're going to note here that once we've factored our denominator, each of the three factors of it are linear, right? X is a linear equation. Two x minus one is a linear equation and x plus two is a linear equation, or linear um, piece to it. So it's a binomial, right? Those are all linear pieces to it. Would we agree with that? Yeah. All right. All of those linear pieces are different from each other. Would you all agree with that? Yes. Yes, they are all different. Okay, good. So what we are about to do. Um, okay, so let me, let, me, let me restart. We're doing partial fraction decomposition to do this integral. Partial fraction decomposition will work for any integral that you can factor the denominator out some with if it's a rational function. The specific way we are doing the partial fraction decomposition right now, or about to do, will only work. There are other ways you have to do it. This will only work if all of the factors in your denominator are linear and they are all different from each other. There are extra things you have to do if there are repeated factors or if some of these factors, if, if you have a quadratic that doesn't reduce down to two linear factors, there's other ways you have to do it. So this method that we're using right now is only good for distinct linear factors in the denominator. I wanna make that clear. We're gonna deal with all the other ways when we come back from vacation, but we won't have time to do that today. So. My guess is that the majority of you have never been taught how to do partial fraction decomposition. Uh, 
it's possible that you learned it on your own or somebody taught it to you somewhere, but we're going to go through it because um, from my experience, I was the only honors pre-cal teacher that ever taught partial fraction decomposition because they all thought it was, everybody else thought it was a waste of time. So um, no, I'll teach that anymore. So those poor children don't get the benefit of learning what they're supposed to learn. So all I've done is I've rewritten my integrand, x squared plus two x minus one over all those factors. And um, it is guaranteed that I can break down any rational function into a bunch of distinct pieces with each of these things as their denominator. So there is a way for me to break down this fraction, this rational function, into three separate fractions where the denominators are each of the linear pieces of our original integrand denominator. And guaranteed, you can always break it down this way, 100% of the time. So what we're going to do is try and figure out what numbers go up on top here. And so anytime we have distinct linear factors like we do, all we have to do is put an A, a B, and a C. And we should be able to solve for A, B, and C um, by using a system of equations and then going through and doing a little bit of a little bit more work. Um, so everybody good so far that we can you know, hopefully you can accept the fact that I'm telling you this can be broken down into three distinct pieces, three separate fractions. That's why they call it partial fraction decomposition, right? For taking this and breaking it up into its partial fractions, the things that make up this full rational function. Good or no? Cool. Okay, cool. So we have an equation here now. We have this thing that we started with is equal to all this other crap that we've got over here. And this thing's got a denominator to it. And these things all have denominators to them. But the denominators are all, you know, slightly different, right? This has got all of the different pieces of this. It would be really cool if I could get rid of all of the denominators. So if I have an equation, with some stuff with some denominators, how do I get rid of all the denominators? The only way I can do that is if they are all equal to one. Well, if they're all equal to one, or if they're all equal to other. What, what was that? Each other. Each other, right? If this denominator equaled all of these denominators, if this denominator was this, and this denominator was this, and this denominator was this, I could cancel them all out, right? Right, it's yeah. just like, you know, you cross multiply and then well, you just cancel, right? Because you have the same term on each side. So that's our goal is we're gonna get each of these three denominators to be identical to this denominator. And I'm gonna do that all in one step while still canceling them out. So this side, since I'm going to cancel this out, is just gonna leave me with x squared plus two x minus one. Over here, to turn a over x into the same thing that has the denominator of this, I gotta multiply the a by what? I gotta multiply it by a two x minus one, and I gotta multiply it by an x plus two. Everybody agree with that? Kind of multiplying the a by that and the x by that. So it's like doing nothing to it, but it gives me that same denominator that this has. True? Yeah. Okay. That makes, sense. that makes a lot of sense. Is that what you said? It makes some sense. Some sense. sense. Some sense. Okay. What about the b over the 2x minus 1? What does this one need to be multiplied? It's got to be multiplied by x over x, right? And it's got to be multiplied by x plus 2 over x plus 2. And I'm not putting the x and the x plus 2 in the denominator because I know once I get them in there, it's just going to cancel out because all of these are going to be the same when I'm done. And what does the c over x plus 2 need to be multiplied by? X and a 2x minus 1 to the numerator and the denominator. So if I wanted to, in fact, maybe I should do this. I'll write down this denominator. And then all of these now have that same denominator, right? I'll write it out. Yeah? And oh, I didn't 
didn't mean to do that. And now I can cancel and cancel that. Yeah, or not? Yes. All right, cool. So effectively what I've got here is x squared plus 2x minus 1 is equal to, now I'm going to distribute all of this garbage out here. So um, 2x times x is 2x squared times the a is going to be 2ax squared. And then 2x times 2 is 4x minus x is 3x. So I'm going to have 3ax. And then minus 2 times a, so I'm going to have minus 2a. I'm going to get a plus bx squared and a plus 2bx. And I'm going to get a plus 2cx squared and a minus cx. Everybody agree with all of that distributing? Yep. All right. Now comes the fun part. I have to take this expression here or this equation here. And I need to write a system of equations front. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to just sort of term by term mash things up. This side has some x squares, doesn't it? How many x squares does this side have? Does this side have? One. It has one. Well, the number of x squares on the left of the equal sign has to equal the number of x squares on the right of the equal sign, doesn't it? For this to be true, for it to be equal to each other? Yeah. So how many x squareds do I have over here? Three. No, I have two a, I have b, and oh, I have five. two c of them, don't I? Yeah. So one needs to be equal to two a plus b plus two c. Good or no? Yeah. Okay. How many x's do I have? I have two x's. So two needs to be equal to three a because I have three a x's plus two b and minus c. Good or no? Yes. Okay, and then I have negative one here, which ought to give us negative one is our constant equals negative two a. Everybody agree with that? Yeah. All right. So now we have a system of three equations with three unknowns. We just need to solve for a, b, and C to figure that out. Good or no? Good. All right. So what is A equal? One half. A ought to be a half, which is going to tell us what? that one equals one plus b plus two c, and that two equals three halves plus two b minus c. Okay. And what does that give us? That'll tell us that b is equal to negative two c. Yeah, if we subtract the one and the two c. So b is negative two c. I'm going to need a new page, I guess, for this now. That's going to tell us that 2 equals 3 halves, so we can subtract the 3 halves. So that's going to give us 1 half is equal to negative 3c. Is that right? Did I do that right? 1 half. I'm oh, sorry, negative 5c, right? 2 b's, so negative 5c. And c is equal to negative 1 tenth. And if C is negative one tenth, then that means B ought to be positive one tenth. Good or no? Quite cool. Okay. 
Um, real quick, somebody just said something in the chat. Let me take a look at that was. Um, um, yeah, so Kevin, yes, that's true. You could also do that. Um, so um, asked if you, couldn't you just plug in zero for X? So yes, you could. If you plug in zero for X here, you end up with negative one equals and plug in your zero for X here. Your zero for X is here. We'll cancel all these terms out. So you get negative one equals um, negative one times two, so negative two A, and that'll let you solve for A. And you could do the same thing with respectively with X equals a half if you wanted to, to cancel out these two terms. And if you plug in a half and you've got, you know, figure out what this is, you know, half squared plus two times a half minus one equals uh, a half plus two times a half times B and solve that for B. Um, or, and then you could also go through and plug in negative two and then we'll cancel out these two and let you find C. So either way you want to do it is, is fine. Um, Kevin, if you want to do it the way you you asked me about, that's perfect. That's no problem. Or um, prefer if, to do this. If this comes way. up on the, if this comes up on the AP test, um, do I have to like mention it's actually like the limit as x approaches those values, or can I just say x equals or x equals one half? Um, I think you'd be fine just saying x equals zero, x equals a half, and x equals negative two. Because you've canceled those out from the denominator, so it's it's fine. I mean, they're not gonna they're not gonna dock you for that. All right, everybody good? You guys see uh, what Kevin is asking about there with plugging in the zero and the one half and the negative two three separate times to solve each one. Yeah. Yeah. So either way works. Um, the I would say the the lower degrees of these like this one it might be easier to do I don't, I don't know maybe it's about the same to do it either way I think the higher degrees it might be easier to do it the other way where you just plug in because you can cancel out a lot of terms you got like six different unknowns might be nice to just cancel out a bunch of them and solve it that way so that might make life a little easier for for some people um, all right, so let's finish this off real quick. So a is a half, which is going to turn this now into an integral of 1 over 2x, because we had a over x before, right? And then we had um, b was over what? 2x minus 1? And then minus, so c there, minus 1 tenth of x plus 2. Yeah. Everybody see how we got to this now from, you know, this was what we had, a over x, b over 2x minus 1, c over x plus 2. So we just plugged in the a, b, and the c into what we had now. Good or no? Man. Yeah, don't worry, we're going to do a lot more than this when we come back. So just now integrate one half natural log f sin of ux. Plus this one, because this is a u equals 2x minus 1, d, 2 dx. So you've got to um, multiply by half, so that becomes 1 tenth natural log absolute value 2x minus 1. And then this one is minus 1 tenth natural log absolute value x plus 2 plus your constant. So that's, uh, that's the process. That's the beginning of what we're going to do with partial fraction decomposition step. Does that uh, make some sense to some of you? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, like cool. what monster just sat down and devised this A, B, C thing? I mean, that's just a pretty standard pre-cal thing. I don't know. I don't know who came up with partial fraction decomposition, but... Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Ryan, you asked how did I get a half equals negative five c. So um, somewhere over here it was right here. It was two equals three halves plus two b minus c. We decided that b was equal to negative two c from the second equation. Right? We had, we had this one equals one plus b plus two c. So we subtracted the one and the two c to get b equals negative two c. And then I just plugged that in here. So negative. 4c minus c is your negative 5c, and then subtract the three halves to get the um, to get the one. Yeah. 
Everybody good there? I don't know what you're talking about, Shri. So. Cool. Good. All right. Um, any other questions on that? Can, can you give us um, like a vast abundance of practice to do on these kinds of like the things that we've been doing for the past three days over break? Yeah, I can give you guys some more of those for sure. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll post some more up um, for you guys to practice. I think, did I already, yeah. Did I put up the trig integrals that we started covering yesterday? Did I put up some problems with those yet? Not, like the, not these, not those. These, I didn't put any of those up, okay. So I'll have some more of those up for you guys to work on. I'll, I'll uh, put together some other problems and I'll put together some of the basic partial fraction ones for you to work on. Um, I won't put up the whole big assignment yet though. 